Yes, everybody, welcome back. This is the Full Time Devils podcast. Today, I've got Joe joining me, I've got Scotty joining me, and I've got John Sheen joining me. Good afternoon, fellas. What's happening? Good morning, here. <laughs> oh, this morning over there, is it? All right. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Like that. Like that, is it? All right. Fair enough. Um, project restart is well and truly underway, isn't it? Like uh, we saw the times that came out yesterday for um, how often they're going to be broadcasting matches, and basically, um, it's a good job no one's working <laughs> <laughs> because basically, it's like do you like Sky Sports News is just always on. That's yeah. now the Premier League. They, they might as well have a Premier League twenty four seven and just be broadcasting a game or analysing a game that's just finished twenty four seven. They're having it, aren't they? It looks amazing. Is that what is this like twelve two four six eight both Saturday and yeah. Sunday, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? There's like three games each on there as well. It's like a, a World Cup being on, but even better, and it's games that you actually care about. Like I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's arguably too many games. Are they all going to be televised as well? Yeah, I think Supposedly. so. I think you're about to, yeah, I think, I think you're about to watch uh, your, your, your team, the rest of your team's games to the end of the season. But yeah, it's going to be like World Cup season. Um, I've been trying to stay sober the last few weeks, but that's going to get tested when the football kicks back off. <laughs> isn't it yeah, mental? Games. It's like, on one hand, it's amazing, isn't it? Um, on, like, I'm I'm really excited to to see Premier League back. There's a 250 percent increase in injuries as we've seen in Germany. We've we've all sort of discussed that something might happen because obviously players have been uh, not running and sprinting and turning and, and playing football essentially uh, for nearly two months, possibly even nearly three months for some of them, or even longer with the injured ones. Mm. Uh, so that's going to always have took a little bit of time to get back into the mix with. But uh, it's. It's mad, isn't it? Because on one hand, like I'm really excited. On the other hand, I think it's mental. But mm. oh, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. I just think it's fucking nuts. It's, I mean, it's going to be interesting. It is going to be interesting. That's where I was going with it. I forgot. I remembered. Um, so they're going to be on free to air TV. Or yeah, they're all totally going to be right, broadcast, yeah. right? Didn't Sky sign up a massive broadcast package? Yeah. Um, why is that now just like yeah. OITV or BBC? There you go. There's there's Premier League. Enjoy. Oh, what the fuck? It wasn't wasn't part of the, the reason that they were also keen on coming back because they were going to lose like five hundred million from Sky and from the TV yeah. revenue. Is, is how is that not being? Or maybe maybe a big portion of it is the sort of international TV rights and stuff. But if it's free to air, even if it's through Sky. I suppose they'll, be, they, they, they'll still be making money on, on ad revenue and stuff. But, yeah, I don't quite understand how, just because it's now this, they're going to have 500 million quid's worth of adverts and worth of stuff to sell out this guy still. So they're not going to let other networks have it. Maybe yeah, it's just going to be on YouTube or something. Yeah. Well, there was, a big, there was a big thing yesterday, wasn't there? I think Liverpool were, were heading it up, make that what you will, where I think the, the Sky yeah. and the broadcasters have said that the product isn't worth what it was when they signed the contract. So they'd be expecting something like, I think it's like a £330 million uh, rebate across all the clubs. Uh, How is it not the same product though? Okay, there's no fans there, but ultimately I don't think people are paying their yeah. Sky subscription to see fans in the fucking Stratford end. No. I'm sure they're paying it to watch the football and the drama of the season unfold. Like, yeah. How is the product different? Well, surely they're getting more. They're getting more uh, people watching more. the TV, aren't they? Because because people aren't going to be able to attend the game, and and, and you're showing more games. For me, they just bump up the advertising rates, don't they? And then they should be laughing. But that's what's happening at the moment. Mad that, yeah. Because you saw. I mean, obviously, it was probably because it was like a, a captive audience in many ways. That the Bundesliga got record amount of views um, mm. over the first couple of weekends since it's been back. You would anticipate that the Premier League would also have that sort of thing, like. Most people are gonna tune in, yeah, worldwide. Like, just yeah, just. I think at the end of the day, I think it just comes down to the the all the parties were involved coming to the bargaining table. I think everybody's from my perspective, the way I just see it is just feels like they're just sick of bargaining. They're just kind of on, there's a side of them that must be think like every party must think like, thank God we're at least getting a chance to finish the season. Thank God we're at least getting these uh these shows back on. I think they're just trying to finish it. <laughs> with whatever they can get. I think they're just like scrapping off whatever they can get to just mm -hmm. get this thing done. And like, that's just, that's just how it feels like to me. How the hell are they going to uh, broadcast games from 12 to eight? I mean, that's just. <laughs> well, the kickoff's eight is 12 till 10. 
How well, good's that? Literally 10 <laughs> straight hours of football all both days of the weekend. Well, you get like Hang two on. piss breaks. You take one you take one dump and you got to eat once or twice. It's ridiculous. Like the whole day. <laughs> does that mean it's going to be on during the rundown? Oh, it does. Yeah, it does. Because the 8 o'clock kickoffs on a Saturday, yeah, it will be on during the rundown. Motherfuckers. I know, especially if it's United playing as well, which it could be. We don't know that yet, do we? Well, just oh, that's annoying. Though. Imagine if you, yeah, if United start, if United at the twelve o'clock kickoff, you're gonna be, we're gonna be drinking at least ten hours watching all those games, or nine hours before the rundown even starts. Yeah, that'll that sounds fun. like a right nightmare. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, I, I, I did say that'll be fun, but I just yeah. sort of preparing myself internally a little bit. Yeah. Have you seen any of the episodes of the rundown? They're oh, just like an alcoholic shitstorm, aren't they? They're yeah, just fucking yeah. absolute carnage. Do One shots about in... every 15 minutes. <laughs> One of them in particular was uh, the, the amount of... The percentage of the show that was remembered by the hosts is a lot lower than you would expect from <laughs> any sort of professional <laughs> endeavour. Yeah, yeah, we got Mingan. We, got, talk, we got Mingan. We just got me. Yeah, you talk about the chart, the Tran May one the other day. I'm looking for uh, when you whenever you're doing the next one, you invite me on another shot of rum. Mate. Done. Definitely. Fuck it, hell, yeah. <laughs> Better than fuck. Yeah, tell Jay to fucking sling it. Because <laughs> he's just sitting there all sober. That was it the last was it the LASK game? Who was on camera for the LASK game? Yeah, it was me, you, Adam, and Jay, wasn't it? Right. So Adam was driving. Jay don't fucking drink. So there was yeah. there was only us two really having it, and I think yeah. I was sort of drinking for Jay and Adam as well, just because. Because yeah. um, I had, I'd say I didn't even know he was on it, let alone yeah. anything that's else. When we went to, that's when we went to the um, the Fitzroy afterwards, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is, yeah. <laughs> and you fell through that big cardboard box. <laughs> 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 like something from Takeshi's Castle or something. You just heard a massive crash and you were head first through a cardboard box. <laughs> So That's the level of drinking you need to be doing while watching football. Uh, we need to figure out how we're going to do a watch along for these things. I mean, yeah. surely we'll be allowed back in the studio before the game start. If it, if they're allowed to have matches on, we're surely allowed to be sitting in a fucking studio. Mm. You'd assume so, but you know. BTR. Yeah, yeah. Prime Mark, Prime Mark will be back open in a couple of weeks. Should be allowed back in the studio if you can go, if you can go shopping for cheap knickers. You know what I mean? And especially and Primark I, and I will as well, be. because <laughs> yeah. Primark's like going to a fucking uh, concert, um, in it? It's just, yeah. it's hammered in there. Yeah. yeah. People, Never has yeah. there been a quiet day in Primark. Just 10,000 people throwing their underwear at each other. It, it, it pretty much is like a concert, really, isn't it? <laughs> Madness. Uh, John, do you have Primark in, in New York? That's, that, that shit flew by me. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. <laughs> I what the like equivalent is. Is it like Who's a JCPenney or something? Uh, okay, yeah, okay. It's, it's, it's much lower market than JCPenney. It's more like a sort of... It can get lower than JCPenney? A, no, it's like a Ross, JCPenney, but... dressed for less, that kind of level, but worse than that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Do you yeah. want to go in and kit yourself out for a lad's holiday for £11 for two weeks? <laughs> <laughs> That's four pairs of sunglasses, three pairs of three-quarter length white trousers so you, can have, <laughs> so you can have your Leeds crest tattoo on the back of your calf out the old time. <laughs> yeah, <you see. laughs> And then loads of uh, vests that have got like sunsets on them. Yeah, <laughs> nailed it. it. Absolutely yeah. nailed it. Right. <laughs> Speaking of giving Jay shit, um, we need to finish off on this because uh, some of Jay's notes for this. I'm going to be honest. Leave a little bit to be desired. One of his questions, which was a suggestion that we discuss, was there's quite a few on this day anniversaries, with it being like the back end of May and all. Fantastic time of year as a United fan to be looking at all our yesterdays because we've had some good yeah. ones. Jay asks us, what's your favourite end to a season? Mm. Fuck off, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> obviously it's 99, obviously. But for sort of... No, it's no but, Joe! But for conversation's sake, what I will say about that season, I don't remember the game. It, was it, who was it? The last game was season, Leicester or Spurs or someone Spurs. in the league. Spurs. Uh, I don't remember seeing that game. I only remember the Newcastle game from the season review video, and I've and I have a brief memory of the Champions League final jump up, jumping up and down when we won. So for me, in terms of the whole experience and what I can actually remember, going to the pub, actually screaming, having a great night, all these things, actually remembering the games, I probably have more good memories from 2008, just because I don't have enough full memories of '99. So as much as it's a bit of a Crap answer. It's at least some sort of conversation around it. But if you remember 99, that's got to be... There's no there's no alternative, really, is there? 
John, when was you born? Uh, 1992. Do you remember 99? Barely. Mm. I was five, so yeah, similar. Scotty, do you remember it? I, I, well, I, I remember it. I remember the hangover the following day. I was pretty pissed when um when, when we won it. Uh, oh, yeah, you're a few I, years I, older than me, aren't you? Uh, I, I was born eighty one. Yeah, I'm eighty three. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so I, I remember it. I remember I went to the I went to the Arsenal away um, at Villa the fact the replay and stuff. So that was the best end of the season. But I also remember uh, the first league title in ninety three, the first Premier League in ninety three. Um, mm. And I think the the euphoria in the city, while it was great at the treble, I also you could also it was sort of like a sense of relief in Manchester when the, when we when we won the Premier League for the first time, um, and obviously going into school the following day and stuff. That was sort of that was an amazing. But yeah, it's a shit question, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the stadium? Because it was the first time I ever saw flags inside Old Trafford. Because I started going in 1990, and flags were banned. Just because of the hooligan thing, you couldn't take a stick into the ground. Yeah. She was clearly going to ram it through someone's fucking eye. Like <laughs> the first time I ever saw flags in Old Trafford was like whatever the of May it was uh, for that Blackburn game. Um, yeah. We was on we was on the Stretford end and it was scaffolding behind us, which is fucking bananas to even think about because it was only the lower of the the Stretford end. Uh, and I remember walking in. Football Italia was big at the time, wasn't it on Channel yeah. Four? And I remember walking in and saying to me, "Dad, oh, it's like Italy." Because Italy had all the big TFOs, didn't it? And like the, the opening sequences of Football Italia is all all big flags and shit like that. And I, I remember just being like totally awestruck, just looking at all the flags. I don't know if I knew the significance of winning a league in 93 because mm. I started watching, you know, like five, six years old. You don't really have a fucking clue what you're doing. This is me, what me and my dad do. Like, this is a thing. And then we went to uh, Wembley in 91 and we lost, but we won the Cup Winners' Cup. And you're like, yeah, like, you know, the Cup Finals, you know, United got a Cup Finals, don't they? I just, you don't know, you don't know the significance of Cup Finals yeah. when you're five, six and seven. You just, you just, ain't, like, it's a day out, in it? And in 92, we had the, the Rumbelows Cup Final, which we won. So, you know, another season, another trophy. And then you win the league in 93 and you're like, yes. But I don't know what the fuck that means, really, mm. at like eight or whatever it was. You're like, cool i guess like i don't know like i don't think you understand the significance i think what i can remember of that day and the visuals of that day i don't i enjoyed what i saw but i don't really know what i saw if you know what i mean or i didn't yeah, really yeah, know course. i reckon it was probably it was probably the, the 96 97 96 and 97 ones where i really understood winning the league because by then I'd seen us lose a league. I mean, obviously I'd, and we didn't win the league uh, in 92. We came very close. Uh, and I can remember, I remember that block of like was it four games in seven days that we played. We yeah. just took, we didn't win a fucking one of them and we just totally fucked it up. Um, but I didn't know the significance of what a league was for me. It was like cups, cups are fucking top, aren't they? Cause you, you yeah. fucking, it's a knockout and then you fucking got Wembley buzzing. So I think it was yeah. only like the 96, 97 season where I actually understood, oh, hang on, no, it's about the league, really. That's yeah. really where it's about. Yeah, was, was that, that that was following Cantona's ban, wasn't it, I think? Was that, was that 96, 97 yeah. when Cantona came back and then, and then we won the league? See, for me, because I'm a bit older than you, I've got friends that are um, Liverpool fans. So when Liverpool won the league when we were growing up, I knew exactly what um, what, what, what the comparison was when, when United had won the league because we had nothing to sort of celebrate. But yeah, I know what you mean. I think, I think if you have, I hate I hate when the term glory hunters come around because you support you support you can't help supporting a a, a, a successful club, um, but that the be, be, being seeing United from beforehand and what where 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 we came from in '93 was it was was a huge sigh of relief and just dragging right in the playground and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think it took a while to understand what a significance of a league was, and I, I know we got spoiled. Like I didn't. I think we didn't go to the treble parade because we was in a beefer still. Um, after that, like, because it was it the day after they came straight back and did a parade. Yeah, they came straight back the following day. Um, I do remember going to a couple of parades, uh, in the nineties for random ones. I think they might have done one in ninety three. They might have been one for the treble in ninety six. But it wasn't like a big thing to do a parade. Like, it didn't really resonate like as a thing even though you're know, i'm in fucking draws and it's not like i'm on the other side of the world like this <laughs> yeah. is just i should have known about these things but it wasn't really a thing and i know that some of the titles that we won towards the back end of fergie there was a blase sort of vibe about mm. oh we won a league 
You know, so yeah. many times we would win a league, no fucking parade. Oh, no. we won a league. Cool. What are we doing next year? Like, on it yeah. didn't give a fuck about winning the league. And even the last one under Fergie, that felt special special. And there was a lot of people that hit the parade for that one. But even that was I mean, do you remember the 2011 one? Anyone? The parade what? or the or the title itself? The parade, there was about ten thousand no. people turned up. It was like yeah. one deep in places. It was like a fucking city parade. It was pathetic. Yeah. I, I I didn't go I didn't go to that parade. I went, I went to that went to the last game um, and the, like the flags were out and stuff like that. But uh, it'll be interesting the next time we win the league because we have we have we have had a, oh. a, a huge gap in between. So um, hopefully it's not as long as the last time we had a gap. Yeah, that's what I was leading up to. Is like because I know the next time that we win a league, oh, there's, there's like oh, a they... seven day bender going to be going down yeah. in my oh, in, in my yeah. house. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be ridiculous. That I reckon. Yeah, it'll be. Proper packed. It, it was weird how it, it, the comp- it was almost complacency as fans, wasn't it? To you're oh. so used to seeing something that you know it was. It almost felt like oh, we only won the league this year. You know, you know fair enough. But Fuck the parade you know, off. really, you want you want <laughs> the league and at least one other cup. It, it really was so such an embarrassment of riches that it, it did just become commonplace to win the league. Which looking back now, you think, how oh, did we ever let that happen? But in a way, it is just a testament just to how dominant they were and. I suppose it's human nature, isn't it? When you see, when you're so used to good things, you you kind of you do get used to. They don't feel quite as special anymore. And obviously, you, you you're not you're you're happy, and it's a great feeling every time they win the league. But the feeling to win the league now would have been would be totally different to that. Like you said, that 2011 one where it was just sort of like we won the league, but we lost the Champions League, so it's not been a great year. And it's just close like, your eyes, lad. Close your eyes. Right. Okay. Join me in this one. This is what we're gonna do. So. <laughs> Let's put it on next year. Let's say the year after. Okay. Solskjaer's still in charge because he took us up to like second or something last year and he had a real good go at it. We maybe went to a semi final of the Champions League because we snuck in because City got banned for being bent bastards. Yeah, please. The following season, we do win the league. And Igalo's still there. And you're watching Igalo <laughs> lifting up the Premier League trophy with Boy Club. And there's Rashford. He's lifting up a Premier League trophy. Mason Greenwood. He's having one. Hannibal, the stupid head knobhead, he's picking one up. Solskjaer becomes the first man, I think. Yeah, he's got to be to win the Premier League as a player and as a manager. Oh, mm. oh, come on! And the first Norwegian to be knighted in the British <laughs> as, as a realm, <laughs> in the, uh, as a knight of the realm. I mean, fucking Solskjaer. Come on, mate. You watch. Just just think of how big the smile's going to be on Igalo's face if he's still here. If he makes it past this fucking summer. If he was here, just as you know, as the Solskjaer role, you know, the backup third or fourth choice striker mm. that comes in and does it. Maybe it's a Gallo that scores the winner that fucking takes us past the Scousers because maybe they win the league again next year and they're on 19. And if they'd have beat us, they'd have gone 20 and 20. But we fucking kept it going and it went 21 19. Oh, keep that gap. Maybe I need that a good narrative, Steve. I wish that I hope, I hope that's true. <laughs> I might start drinking now in anticipation, to be fair. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> you don't want to be, be... You don't, don't want to just... caught cold. No. <laughs> that's got to be a party build-up for that, because that's going to get fucking hectic, innit? Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> I don't want to get Absolutely. ahead of myself here, but I might... No, you already are. You're already pre- ahead of yourself. Preemptively book an open-top bus for May 2022. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah, worst comes to worst, you've got a boss. Yeah, you've got a boss. <laughs> you've got a couple a of mates, a couple of beers. Go on, yeah, get on a party bus. bus. Yeah. All right, Jay's other question. Um, he was talking about Igalo. Should he stay? All that lot. Does anyone think he shouldn't? Long term or short term? But does it matter? There is no long termism in football anymore. Well, yeah. yeah, but should we give him a two year contract? I would have a different opinion to should we try and keep him to the end of the season? I think it's based on I think it's based on what we were able to see in that short period. Any everything else aside, details aside, if the question was just do we have wanted to stay or go, I think the answer is quite simple. Of course, we'd like to see him stay, given what he's yeah. already shown us. And then you start adding to the specifics, like how long is the contract, how much he's getting paid, how much is Shanghai going to get paid, et cetera, et cetera. Then it gets a little bit more difficult. But based on what we've just seen, I'd love to see him stay. Because there is a potential scenario where. To get him from Shanghai, we are paying him like two hundred and fifty grand a week. And then, if you give, you know, imagine we gave him a two-year contract, and next season he gets three goals in thirty appearances, and he's on the same as Marcus Rashford. Then, then you start to have to question: 
you know, was this a good decision? But in terms of the guy himself, how he's been, I think, you know, I keep saying this, but the people have almost kind of turned him into this like mascot of United where he's like, oh, look how much he likes being there. He's actually been really good. He's actually played really well. He scored good goals. He looked good in the big games. He could have scored a goal against Chelsea, but we won the game anyway. I thought he looked excellent holding the ball up against City. Obviously, he played well um, in the cup competitions, getting a couple of goals as well. I think on the pitch has been more impressive than this kind of like, you know, it's good that he's a fan and it's good that he seems to be getting on with people and stuff. But I think if you actually just look at his performances, he's been really good and that's been the, the best thing for me, how good he's actually been. But at some point, you know, the money that they're offering him, there's reports this week that they're going to offer him, um, Shanghai going to offer him a 75 million three-year deal. So, like, you know, nearly, you know, 25 million quid a year or euros or whatever, dollars, whatever it would be. Um but United can't come close to offering that, and if they do, then I think it does get it does start to get you know towards. Well, that's what make it interesting. Yeah. If they offer him half a million a week, which is roughly what that sort of equates to, and I'm not sure what the yeah. tax situation is in China. I think it's like don't worry about it. Almost. Um, yeah. If they're offering him that sort of cash, and he goes, "Nah, I, but I'll stay at United for," you know, even if it's 150, 150 yeah, like. Fucking hell. I don't care how long the contract is you give him. You give the man that's willing to do that, especially, yeah. like you said, not because he's he's a United fan, not because he smiles when he's arriving at training, because he's a fucking good footballer that offers something totally different to what yeah. we've got. And if you are going to go look at Josh King and you do want to look at, I don't know, Arnautovic or fucking Mandzukic or any of these, every yeah. single one of them is a risk. Every single one of them is the potential to have a personality clash with the coaches or any of the other players. They might not fit in. They might not like the area after they fucking arrive here. Why risk that when you've got a guy that clearly doesn't fucking have any of those issues and fits like a bastard glove? It makes no sense for me. 20 million is nothing. Like, we've probably wasted that on fucking Sanchez while he's been at Kininta. So fuck it. Yeah. Good point. Should do a swap deal for Sanchez for um, for Regalo, uh, but I I I definitely keep Regalo um, de- money money dependent. Uh, I think like you were saying, Joe, his goal ratio. I think he, he scores every uh, seventy minutes. I think it's coming. He's got two. Mm. He's got four and eight, hasn't he? But every, every seventy minutes, he looks conceding a goal. But yeah, there there are risks with um, with anybody else to bring in. And I think that we're, what what the best thing to do is, is keep Igalo if we can keep it to January and then build on that rather than do mm. the like rather than do the replace and get like for like. I mean, I, I, we are bringing Sanchez back, aren't we, in the summer? Are, are you lads excited about that? Maybe, maybe that's Solskjaer that he's got a point to prove. I, uh... I think I that's think... Solskjaer playing the game, isn't it? That? Yeah, 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 for sure. I think that point to prove is probably about 4.2 million, whatever we're going to get for him, yeah. him <laughs> rather than any point on the pitch. Uh, I, he's going to say, he's not going to say, yeah, he's shit. We'll, you know, we'll take pennies for him, is it? We're going to try and get some sort of fee for Sanchez, but I can't imagine he's in the manager's plans on the pitch. Sure, I mean, surely not. I mean, if we can, if we can get, if we can get a deal, if we can strike a deal, like, uh, if we can strike a deal where we throw in Sanchez in that mix, where we send them off to Shanghai, we're not going to be able to come as, we're not going to even want to come anywhere near that seventy-five million figure that Shanghai proposes. But let's say we get a deal somewhere around that range where we agree to something, we Mm. send them Sanchez, and we potentially keep a low-risk, decent footballer in Odin and Gallo. In current in current situations, that's a hell of a good investment, if especially if he's going to give you good returns. And on top of that, I think, Steve, you mentioned it before, the words fitting in is perfect. I mean, he not only does he enjoy it, he, he looks to be syncing well with the other lads. I think he, it's, just, it's just a perfect all-around scenario as long as the fees aren't ridiculous. If we can get him staying – if we can get him locked in here, I think it's potentially one of one – of, it's going to be one of those like underrated, uh, quote-unquote, re-signings, if you will. I think United are moving away from the Galactico model. Um, I think that's why Sanchez has been chinned off. I think that's partially the reason why uh, Lukaku got chinned off. Possibly the reason why Pogba's going to get chinned off. Um, I think I'd be very surprised if United offered him like 300 grand a week to to stay and be the fourth choice striker. I don't think they could justify that. Mm -hmm. And if that's end up why, why he goes, because he's like, well, they're offering me that. I'll do it for half that. And United are like, well, that's, Still too much to be honest with you, pal. Mm. Fine, right? If that's the case, then fine. I get it, and maybe that much because you probably get someone in the range of of Harland for that sort of cash. Obviously, not that sort of transfer fee, but that sort of wage. So mm. you have to look at it like that. And if yeah. ultimately Harland is our first choice, and but you can't get him for another two years, then bridging the gap of Harland 
might be what Igalo mm. does. And if that's the case, brilliant. But that fact sounds a bit bit too much like a, a plan for United. Mm. And I don't think as well you can particularly begrudge Igalo if he was to sort of go, you know what, this the money you're offering me is obviously great money, more than most people would ever hope to earn. But the money that China are offering me, Shanghai are offering me, is enough to change my family's life for another generation rather than go, you know what I mean? It's it's literally sort of family community changing money, not just sort of life changing money. So I wouldn't be too annoyed if it was like, actually, this is too good for me to to pass up. But the, the talk that, that came out in the last hour or so from Sky Sports is saying that Shanghai are open to a gallo stay until January, which is a, a, a date and a month that I hadn't seen mentioned up until today. So I think that could be interesting. It seemed as though we were trying to get him just till the end of this season, but January is another sort of step and another chunk uh, of next season as well, so that might be interesting if if we can do that. I wonder why they're they're so open to doing that because they're still paying some of his wages, and he's one of their best players, and their league's about to restart. So I don't quite know what Shanghai are getting out of this, except maybe some good press, and maybe you know it might help him get other attract other players in the future. But what's in it for them at this point? I don't really understand that. There's also the thing that supposedly foreign nationals aren't going to be allowed back into China until well, there October. Is that. Yeah. Which might throw a bit of a spanner into the works, in which case maybe it's posturing from them, knowing yeah. that they can't uh, bring him back because of the the restrictions on travel. Maybe they're mm. going, well, we're going to offer him seventy five million over three years, and everyone's going, what? Well, no, you fucking not. Like, no. so maybe it's posturing of them to say this. Look how much we wanted him. We was prepared to offer him that. So maybe we don't yeah. get twenty million. Maybe we get more. But aren't they and- bankrolled by like some unbelievable businessman out there? I'm not sure. But the the the, the place in limits. Do you mean on, you don't know the Chinese Super League? What the fuck else? I with? don't know it particularly well. But I, I, you hear all these rumours of uh, foreign nationals can't, aren't allowed to come back. But obviously he's got a, a contract of employment with a, a Chinese company. I wonder does that not affect? You know, it's one thing's tourism and stuff like that. But isn't he a, a resident on a on a green card or a visa, or however it works, with a, a contract with a with an employer there? I wonder if that makes a difference. Also, the, <laughs> there's there's rumours of a, of um, aren't there contract. Um, caps and salary caps and stuff. They're about to come in. Three yeah. years doesn't really seem mm. to fit with much of a contract cap. To Not me, allowed so. to buy new players, so that might yeah. force into the works. But there's to all kinds there. Yeah, what I'm, what I'm saying is there seems to be a lot of rumours and misinformation that is either mistranslations or people sort of like, no offence, but like us sort of half hearing things and saying stuff and you read stuff in the paper and you think, that doesn't sound right, there's this coming in. It's I, I'm never quite sure the, the state of play over there, but uh, you know, January. I think if we could keep him till January, like Sky Sports are saying, I think that would be an, an excellent addition, definitely. Men. All right. So the other point that um, that Jay put down here was uh, it was Lee Sharp's birthday yesterday. Um, you birthday. fuckers don't remember '99. You ain't remembering Lee Sharp. But, uh, <laughs> I but remember and, him from the videos. <laughs> me and Scotty might, uh, and he yep. was saying, "Is he a legend?" And then he expands on that by saying, "What is a legend? <laughs> is there too many people that are called a legend?" Does it win a few trophies, score a couple of important goals? What makes a legend? Because I used to say there's only one me. I used to say United have got one. Because otherwise, everyone who ever played for us is a legend, and that doesn't feel right. Like mm. For me, Bobby Charlton was a legend. Left us as all-time leading scorer for United, for England, won a Ballon d'Or, won the World Cup, won a Champions League, uh, won the league, won the FA Cup, was a Busby Babe, survived Munich. Literally, a fucking Hollywood career, if ever there was yeah. one. That's a legend. Anyone else? played for United. That's all you need to say. You don't have to come up with a fucking crazy word to describe them. But I've got um, Fabian Brandy on my podcast in a minute. What, do we call him a fucking legend? Like, I wouldn't have thought so. You know know what you should do, Steve? You should ask ask Jadinho that question. I think the word legend is so different amongst the different eras. Like, just even amongst your era versus my era, I'm, uh, the the word legend resonates so differently. Uh, recently, I I, I mentioned a tweet. I was so bored. I was like, you know what? I gotta make a video on my channel. And maybe like a few weeks ago, I because the whole uh, Michael Jordan Last Dance documentary was exploding here in the states. Hmm. I tweeted. I said, in your honest opinion, who was a bigger legend, Michael Jordan or Cristiano Ronaldo? And you know, everybody's entitled to their own opinion, but uh, it was just. The, the amount of replies in which the responses were absolutely ridiculous was unreal. I mean, I was getting people telling me that Michael Jordan shouldn't even be considered a legend because Cristiano Ronaldo has 100 million Instagram followers. Like, then they were telling me to go F off. I was just, 
like you don't you you would expect that to be one or two people but that's just that was like dozens of them messaging me they were saying like you know so many different things which just which is which just goes to show what what the actual the the the, the meaning of legend the meaning of quote unquote goat i guess if you will is just so it's just so stre- stretched whoever you ask yeah I think it's, it's been diluted, hasn't it, over the years, what sure. actually falls into the, 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 the term of legend. Um, and for me, I think you need to have, unless it's glaringly obvious, like your Ronaldo's or your Messi's, I do think you need to have like a decade in between what the, the, the player retiring, where you can look back at their career as to, as, as to what they've achieved and ha- have some sort of comparison with other players before you start saying that the legends and I agree with you still in terms of like Bobby Charlton and stuff like you can refer to what, what he's done the longevity of his career but um, nowadays uh, uh, like p- people would say Eden Hazard's a, a legend for you know for Chelsea or whatever but he's, he's, he's still playing and I just I just think it's very it's very premature uh, and I know Jay was asking is Lee Sharp a legend um, and then for me uh, he, he lost our leg- his legend um, rights when he signed for Leeds United a valid point <laughs> <laughs> Undoubtedly, but then then it brings up so many grey areas with everything because nothing's ever that straightforward. No. Probably one of the best goalkeepers, if not the best goalkeeper I've ever seen, Peter Schmeichel. Uh, and I know I don't want to get Jay started on this one with Peter Schmeichel, <laughs> but like he, he signed for City after saying he was basically retiring. That that you know, there's a few yeah. people, Gary Neville being one of them, holds a grudge against that. Like. Yeah, and the, like you said about it being diluted and stuff, there's loads of sort of key words that get bandied around all the time, like passions, another one, legend, all these things where it's just an easy thing to say to describe someone. I, I think there are more than more than one. Obviously, I think Bobby Charlton is, definitely is a legend. He's probably, like you said, the most quintessential legend you could possibly have. Like, is he, It's the benchmark of that, sure. Yeah, but I think someone like Eric Cantona, I would describe as a United legend, how he galvanised the team coming back from not winning things for so long and, and the way he sort of conducted himself afterwards and the, the way he sort of, si- what he signified at the time and yeah. continues to signify now. I think I would put someone like Cantona up there as well, but I mean, Lee, no one's arguing that Lee Sharp's a legend for United, is he? I think you have to be one of the standout <clears throat> players in a successful or at least important time and then you have to have a sort of a feel and a gravitas and a, and a community or kind of club involvement afterwards that gives you a, a status above other just good, you know, like Rio Ferdinand, someone like that, was one of the best players in the best period we've ever had or one of the best periods we've ever had. But I wouldn't quite say he's a sort of, he's right on the cusp. But I think when you're really taking everything into account, I think there are quite a few players in that. To, you know, you look, you look at Rooney, you look at Vidic, you look at Evra, you look at, like you said, Schmeichel. And you kind of think, are they, is it, would it be a, a sort of a club legend? I think the, the, there's a there's a sort of an echelon just below that that United are fortunate enough to have probably a dozen people in the <laughs> how successful fucking a dozen yeah. well, I start reeling off I mean, some like, names right now and you're I mean, just gonna right be like there. yeah okay got to be in it it was like yeah. I mean is Ryan Giggs a, is Ryan Giggs a legend I mean we're fighting if he ain't yeah <laughs> like yo I was I can't remember who I was talking it was like my granddad or my dad and someone and I was like no oh, it's Bobby Charlton that's that and it, my granddad mm. I think was like well about Duncan Edwards and you're like Okay, Duncan Edwards. You're like, yeah, okay, what about exactly. Robbo? And you're like, okay, Robbo. Kino, yeah. fuck's sake. You're like, there's been that many unbelievable players yeah. that transcend. Um, yes, I mean, Ronaldo's an interesting one for me. For me, he's a legend of the game, but I put him down as a Real Madrid legend and not a United legend. He might be the best player I've ever seen in a United shirt. But that doesn't, I think legend has to transcend football and ability. I think, like you're saying, it almost be ambassadorial for the club. And mm. I think Solskjaer's a legend at the club, not just because he had a fucking tap-in um, in 99 or something, right? It's nothing to do with that. It's to do with, if I could bring you to Charlton away in 2007, right? Mm. Or 2006, he scores a goal and turns to the fans and starts doing that to the fans. It's a small act, but it, it represented the relationship Solskjaer had with the fans. That was why he was a legend. Paddy Evra, you can probably throw into the legend mix because of the relationship he had for the fans and the football team. It has to go beyond that. That was why it was always a question mark with Rooney for me. When you start looking back on Rooney's career and you go, all right, he's ended up as United's leading all-time goal scorer. He completed football. He's won literally everything. He's a fucking legend, isn't he? Let's be honest with ourselves. 
But there was always a question mark because there wasn't a connection. I see some mm. fans that are non-local fans that have got, of course, Rooney's a legend because for them, he was the icon of, of that decade, of that of that era of Manchester United. But I think that there is a disconnect at times. And sometimes that there has to be something tangible in terms of the relationship. And it felt like a job at times for Rooney. Probably mm. why someone like Ander Herrera was taken to a bit easier. Why someone like Odi Nagalo is taken to a little bit easier because it don't feel like a job for them the way it felt like with Rooney. He was extremely professional in a lot of aspects, mm. but also didn't quite... He's always I like think, at arm's reach, wasn't it? I think Rooney's underrated as a player on the pitch. I think he's, I think he's the best English player uh, other than Paul Scholes in my lifetime. Um, but I think, yeah, in terms of the legend is a different thing to world class or best of his generation or all this sort of thing that you can that you could say about Rooney without any doubt. But totally. yeah, there has to be a kind yeah. of an, a, an attachment and a back and forth, like you said, where they represent more than just what they do on the pitch. And Rooney never quite felt like he did represent more uh, than what he did on the pitch. The, what, like you said, the the thing about the the letter that he put out and he tried to leave multiple times and all that sort of stuff. Even though he's the top scorer and England's top scorer, he doesn't quite have that same kind of emotional connection to him, do you? No, and I think a lot of people can't separate the two because Wayne Rooney the footballer might be one of my favourite things to have ever witnessed in a United yeah. shirt. At times it was it was amazing watching Wayne Rooney. But you've got to be able to separate that from the, the, the man. Uh, and yeah. the man I don't think was a full I don't think he fully bought in and went in. I mean, you could see the difference when he went back to Everton. He's an Everton fan. And to be honest, I appreciate him not lying to us about his, you know, his true feelings. But you could feel it, like it was tangible. You could, you know, it was there. Yeah. Like you could, you could feel that like he wasn't fully committed uh, with everything, and that's fine, I guess. But yeah. it, it does take something away. Mm. Uh, right, I think we could probably go on for hours on that, to be honest, because the the legend yeah. debate is a, is, a, is a, there's no I answer to, to it. It's a pure gold. opinion thing. But yeah. yeah, you could just go on forever, couldn't you? Yeah, but like, I, just to add on that, sorry. Um, like, when I was younger, like when I was first, uh, when I was in college, and just I was, I think I was watching every single Premier League game I could get my hands on while I was uh, skipping classes and everything. It was, for me at that moment, I was very, uh, I guess, expressive without reason. So when we were discussing, when people used to ask me, uh, you know, what qualifies a legend in your dictionary, uh, I would say skulls all day, but I would also throw in the name like. Jisung Park, and I used to get eyebrows raised like tenfold. On, and I get that. And now I get that. I sit here saying, oh, yeah, maybe. I'm not, I'm not sure if legend is the right word. Maybe a cult hero or something like that. But back then, he was a legend in my eyes because he transcended for, He transcended his impact on me post his career or post Manchester United. And it was just – he was such an important – both skulls uh, – you know, I can throw dozens of players as much as I'm sure you guys can as well. But – Players like Paul Scholes, players like Jason Park, players like Rio Ferdinand, they 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 play such an important impact in my personal life. Just not as just footballers, but you know, obviously in conjunction with what they did on the pitch. But what they did for me here was so important to me that for me it, they, they they were considered legend. But you know, I think you know what you were saying, Steve. Like it's just the qualifications, the dilution of the word. I think all that you know. If we can sort of narrow it down, I think the word uh, um, legend just definitely gets thrown around a lot more easier. But for me, like, you know, Jason Park was a legend in my heart. Like, it was just, that was one of those things. When you see the teams that play in the Legends games as well, that doesn't help. No. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. But Clinton Park, you're not legend legends for you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, I think part of it is, you know, the, the whole, everything has to be, sort of concentrated down to a single word, a catchphrase, a soundbite, a goat, a, a legend. And I think a lot of it is social media and Twitter of how the opinion you can have on a player has to be fitted or fit into 140 characters or whatever it is. Everything oh, has absolute. to be... Absolute. It has to be absolute. And it has to go in a line, tiny Single box. this. Yeah. yeah. Start one, uh, bench one, release one. Everything has to be a sort of a, a, a social media kind of... Oh, like mate, money again, grab, like, screen grab of a, oh, of a, of a way of pick, opinion. Pick one, or who's the best? Yeah. I don't know. I don't walk around with a rank of everything in my head. Yeah. Like, I have, like, pools of things I really enjoy. I don't yeah. really go, oh, that's that's my favourite, fuck the rest. I, I, no. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Yeah, just, I think that has, that yeah. has um, put, uh, and also everything has to be slightly more 
controversial and slightly more of a loaded question to, to get retweets, to get replies and comments. What are you on about that? That, that? That's stupid. Everyone has to have upped their opinion and strengthened it by two or three times so that it, it sort of captures people's imagination on social media to the point where you're either a legend or you're shit. So then everyone that's, that was ever any yeah, good gets the labelled a legend. Yeah. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it up there, but before we go, I'm going to just say, Tony Evans, lay off the fucking glue, lad. Uh, man's out here fucking telling everyone that Steve Nichol was better than Maldini. Um, and doubling down on it, not like, oh, yeah, it was probably a bit of a fucking wild one. It, he's literally out there saying, because he was more versatile, he was better than Maldini, which clearly means John O'Shea's better than Messi. So uh, I'll leave you on that one, shall right. we, for a, for a fucking soundbite. Tag me when you clip it up. Um, right, uh, make sure you go and check out Scotty and Motty, uh, which is a new past that podcast that... Uh, Scott has got with Jay talking utter shit. Have you done the call centre one yet? Uh, not yet. Yesterday we got onto the discussion of proper Manx and why Noel Gallagher is a fucking plastic Manx. Uh, and oh, I've been getting, I've been I've been getting shit all morning on social media about it. Uh, oh yeah, fucking Jeff, Scotty and Mossy is, Channel. Is Sorry, mate. Because the well. student got any sort of cash in the bank whatsoever, he fucked off to North London. That's exactly the that, the sound bites on the Twitter page now. It's pretty much yeah. Uh, he lives in Burnage. So there's about eighteen of fucked off as soon as he got any money, and now he's the poster boy for what being a man is supposed to be. So Scotty and Motty channel. Yeah. Oh, Joe, I'm gonna fucking have to wade in on that. I think. Oh yeah. 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 What, uh, oh, all right. Yeah. We can fucking end up going do another two hours here. There's some happening up there, Joe. Uh, make oh, sure you check just... out Joe on Stretford Paddock and make sure you go and see what's going on with John Shin, who is now the most popular John Shin on YouTube. That's still the case, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah, fuck John Shin. We fucking beat him. <laughs> right, cheers, everyone. Uh, make sure you subscribe and uh, hopefully, I'll be back soon. See you then.